All right, bear with me here. If I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Man, do I love that. Safety first. For as long as I can remember, I have been fascinated with industrial robots. Seeing these incredible machines, lifting parts with precision over and over again, welding pieces together, it's just amazing. But a few months ago, this fascination turned into a complete obsession. And I began spending every waking moment thinking about how I would build this robot. So how much power do I need in order to run seven motors at one time? If I lose power, how do I prevent the arm from collapsing on me or dropping the load? How am I supposed to keep the cost down? When the arm is fully extended, there'd have to be tremendous loads on the bearings in the shoulder. I have to figure out how they manage to keep those joints so small and yet support all of the weight that they have extended out. Whew, good run. How am I gonna synchronize and control seven different motors all at the same time? I can't stop thinking about this. I have to do it. Excuse me. Hmm. Part of what makes this so challenging is the wide range of skills required in order to accomplish this by myself. We're not just talking about mechanical design, which is the part that I feel comfortable with. This is my first project welding aluminum. There's a significant amount of machining, which I am a brand new machinist. There's programming involved. There's a significant amount of electronics. This project has been quite the challenge. I would not be doing this project justice if I tried to cram all of that into one video. Besides, I have learned so much I really wanna share it all with you. Let's begin with the basics. What is an industrial robot? Robots come in a lot of different flavors. In fact, this CNC machine you see here is considered to be a Cartesian robot. I built this a few years ago and there's a whole series of videos on my YouTube channel about it. I'll put a link in the description for you if you wanna know more about that guy. But the robot we're gonna be talking about is called an articulator robot. They usually have anywhere from three to seven pivot points allowing them to rotate and move in a lot of different ways. Normally there's a motor right down in the center which allows it to pivot about its base. That will be axis one. Axis number two has a motor right here and this allows the, what we're gonna call the full arm or the upper arm here to move the body of the robot forward and back. Then there's a third motor allowing you to bend at the elbow and move the forearm. Beyond that we'll have more motors in the back which allow you to rotate around the wrist like this pivot at the wrist. Right out here at the end, there's often a faceplate with a motor behind it as well. That will allow you to rotate whatever tool is mounted here. It could be a cutting tool like a spindle, it might be a welding gun, or even a pneumatic gripper. Finally, you can take this entire robot and sit it on a track. And now you can move the entire robot whatever distance you like in order to perform its duties. Now that you've seen that, let's talk about the real thing. Here is the robot under construction. It's not quite done yet, in fact, I've 3D printed two critical parts. This is supposed to be 6061 aluminum with some brackets welded onto it. It's a complex piece because it needs to be carefully welded and machined on several sides. As you can see, there are gonna be tapped holes here. It's supposed to have another cover on top of it. So I really wanna take my time and make that part right. Also, this piece, which is currently 3D printed, will also be made out of 6061 aluminum. Again, it's a really complicated shape and I wanna take my time and make it right. So I decided to 3D print this piece so that I could test the assembly and make this video for you guys today. In a future episode, I'd like to talk about many of the design decisions that I made. For example, why did I put the motor down here instead of up here? There are pros and cons to doing both. This assembly will have seven motors when it's complete, but right now we've got six. There's a 400 watt AC servo motor down here in the base with a gear reduction, which we'll talk about more in a future episode. This is one kilowatt. These are all AC servo motors. 750 watts, that one's 100. There's one in here that's 200 watts. That was really fun, trying to figure out how to bend this belt, get the motor oriented in that direction, figure out how long this belt needs to be, figure out how to tension the belt. That was quite an engineering challenge, but we figured it out and there's a 100 watt motor right there, giving us all the different axes of rotation. One of the things that's really difficult to predict in advance is what the actual payload will be at full speed. I've done the math and I realized that 
based on the torque available from each of the motors and the current gear ratios that I have, I ought to be able to fully extend this arm to a little over one meter and hold on to a 30 pound or approximately 14 kilogram load. What gets tricky about that though, is when you try to accelerate the load, that produces additional forces. I need to make sure you understand just how much power it takes to swing around a 30 pound load. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go find a jug of water or something that weighs about eight pounds and pick it up. So you can pause the video, let's do that right now. I'm gonna put this on a tripod so I can show you what I want you to do. Okay, I didn't quite get eight pounds. This weighs about five pounds. This is a solid puck of 6061 aluminum. Here's what I want you to do. You're gonna take your load and extend your arm straight out like so, okay? Now, you're probably gonna to start to feel your muscles burning here at the shoulder. That's just from holding the load. Now, I want you to swing your arm from the side to the front, don't hit anything, as quickly as you can without moving your body. Just like so. Okay, here's what I want you to get here. Not only does it take power to hold the load out, but there's an additional force that comes from accelerating the load from zero. It's called F equals MA. And that, my friends, is an additional challenge when you're talking about designing a robot. The faster you want it to move, especially the starts and stops, is gonna require huge reactionary forces from whatever it's mounted on, and it's also gonna require a significant amount of power from whatever motor is trying to accelerate your load from a stop. I haven't fully tested it yet because I don't have any limit switches installed at this point. I'll take that back. They're installed, but they're not hooked up. So I need to get all of that wire before I can truly test this. Let me tell you, with one kilowatt, 750 kilowatts, this thing is super dangerous and I don't want to risk injuring myself or anyone uh, playing around before this assembly is complete. So I'm going to machine those pieces first and then I'll fully load test it. So there's a couple more things I wanna show you here. Uh, I 3D printed these cover plates in order to cover up all the access holes that I made for cables to come out, for getting the motors in and out in order to do maintenance. I also wanted to cover up this huge angle iron plate that I have down here. I wanted this to look a little bit more like the industrial robots that you see. And those usually have cast parts that are really curvy with all the appropriate machine faces. I certainly couldn't make something like that here in my home shop, but I could 3D print a plastic cover over the structural members underneath. And that's what I did here. Now this is my first attempt at making a really curvy shape like this. There are almost no flat surfaces on this part, and that would be extremely difficult to model in SolidWorks, at least for me. I'm not much of a surface modeler. So I tried out X-Shape for this, X-Shape is also new to me. I've never done any sub-D modeling. This was my very first attempt at it, and it came out okay. I had to split it in a couple of different ways to get this to work. The first version that I made of this, I couldn't quite get it to slide in place without having to remove the motor. There are two tapped holes right here, and that allows me to install a lifting eye for picking up the robot. Again, another thing that needs to be considered when designing something like this. There's one more thing that I need to make, and that is my cable tray assembly, which will cover up all of this. Now, as mentioned before, for the purposes of this video, I just zip tied a few things down in order to kind of temporarily manage these cables. But hopefully in a future episode, you'll see what my final solution looks like for managing the enormous amount of power that needs to come into this robot, especially when I have all seven motors running at the same time. I'm so excited about sharing more of this content with you. Let me tell you, there are over a hundred hours of recorded machining for this project. A hundred hours. You talk about baptism by fire, there should be a certificate or something for that. I don't know what all the series is gonna be about yet. There's probably gonna be some combination of teaching videos like how I used the servo motors and how you could use them for your projects, as well as sort of how I designed this, even though you may not build this exact machine. What would be amazing is if I could actually talk with a robotics expert. If you work for KUKA Robots or something like that and you've got experience and knowledge you wanna share, maybe it'll end up being part of this series. I don't know. I'd love to talk to someone about it. I also wanted to share with you some amazing news that I got from SolidWorks. By the way, this project would not have been possible without them. They are the sponsors of this amazing build that you see here today. 
That's not actually what I want to say. What I want to tell you is that coming later in the year, they're going to be releasing a maker version of SOLIDWORKS, which is just incredible. You guys know I've been using this program for years. It's my favorite package for designing all of my projects. But let's be honest, it's designed for industry, not for the individual maker. That is until later in the year. For $99, you'll be able to get the maker version of SOLIDWORKS later in the year. I'm gonna put a link in the description so that you can sign up to be notified when the program becomes available. It will finally be possible for more of you to use the same package that I use, because I'm not using that other stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this introduction to this massive project that is still underway. There'll be more coming up soon. Thanks for watching. Good gracious, man. Got some serious guns there. <laughs>